There were rumors that the Beatles were not always the same person. In fact, they, there was once a rumor that there wasn't even the real four of you who came over here on one trip, that they just sent four. We just sent four dummies out there. <laughs> that and, uh, what was the other one? Oh, that you uh, actually were all bald and that uh, yeah. had no hair and that you would, yeah. um, that was so you could go out in the street and not it's be wretched. truth. Oh, it is? Yeah. Oh, well, then they aren't rumors. Let's take a little march through time with bird's eye frozen orange. <laughs> Plus, well, actually, I don't think the audience at home cares what we're looking at. I mean, they're more interested in, in what we well, think. Well, I want to know who, what's looking at me, really. You know, yeah. I'd like to check it out where it really is. But you don't have to, they always say you don't have to worry about what camera's on, that they'll find you. Yes. That's, a, that's how I... Big Brother is watching you. <laughs> <laughs> Whatever. Yoko sat in that very chair. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> well, I bet many people have sat in. Well, a lot of people have sat in. When you, uh, if you and, you and John and Yoko do meet, though, you're not really no, no. gritting your teeth. No, no, we're good friends. Yeah. Well, all of that about her being the problem with the group, is that so slightly silly that, that a one woman could be so much of a problem? No, the group had problems long before Yoko came along. <laughs> <laughs> Many problems, folks. Can you remember who was the first to say, you know, I bet we'll break up one day, um, that this won't go on, that this is sort of a dream that we can't all stick no. together? No. Uh, I don't really remember anything about the Beatle days. Uh, it seems like a sort of, you know, previous incarnation when I think about it. And a long time ago, like yeah. another life. Yeah. Yeah. Do you regret any of it? No, no. Don't regret really anything, you know? Mm -hmm. I mean, that's what happened and it was good, you know, it was good, but it was also good to carry on, do something else. In fact, it was a relief. <laughs> Sometimes they say you were... I mean, some you people can't understand that, you know, because Beatles was such a big deal. They can't understand why we should uh, actually enjoy splitting up. But there's a time, you know, there's a time when people grow up and they leave home or whatever they do and they go for a change, you know, and it was really time for change. Do you think a lot of people just envied the idea of being world celebrities, though? And being well, some people, you know, would go on and on forever singing the same tune and playing mm -hmm. the same gig if they were making some money, you know? Yeah. But uh, I think we'd all rather give that up and try going on our own and try doing something we really want to do mm. and if we don't make it then hard luck but as it happens we've all got such a lot of like goodwill hanging over from being Beatles yeah I mean you probably wouldn't have me on the show if I hadn't have been one <laughs> let's face it no you wouldn't get here on looks alone <laughs> uh, do you think you might have been the most anxious of the four to get out I get that impression from reading about it. Uh, maybe, it. maybe, yeah. Yeah. I wonder it was why. Very, well, because um, over the uh, years, you know, I had such a lot of songs mounting up that I really wanted to do, but I only got my quota of one or two tunes per album. Mm -hmm. And uh, that way I would have had to have recorded about a hundred Beatle albums just to get out the tunes I had in 1965. Were you held down by the other fellas? Uh, well, very subtly, yes. Yeah? How would they not do really, it? I mean, just... They didn't strap me down or anything like that. Yeah. But, um, no, it was just the way things happened, you know. They, it started off I didn't write, they wrote, then I started to write, and mm -hmm. it was uh, sort of trying to push in a bit. You don't, you don't actually read or write music, do you? No. Well, then how, when you say write... Well, write... If you have a tune that hits you, uh, how do you get it down? Just keep it in your head, you know? Mm -hmm. Just work it out on the piano or on the guitar. But then do you tape it or what preserves sometimes, it? Sometimes, sometimes. Mm -hmm. Put it on tape. But usually you can remember it in your head if you don't. I mean, I write the words down and remember the tune in my head. Yeah. Do you wish you'd studied composition and no. all of that? You don't need it. Well, I, maybe, uh, maybe it would help somewhere. <laughs> I probably wouldn't have to uh, pay a copyist. Yeah. But you don't miss it. I mean, you can... No, no. It's, it would just help. Maybe because it's not time, really so. sort of music, you know. Yeah. It's like... Uh, I mean, there's a difference between people who write music and classical things and big arrangements to the sort of thing I do. It's just really it's very simple. Mm -hmm. uh, but they, they always talk about you as the real musician of the group. And if you yeah. haven't studied music, 
Do, what do they mean by that? That, that you're I more serious about me? You've seen it, though, haven't you? That they it's say. probably because I didn't smile so much. <laughs> <laughs> to be a real musician, you have to be sour, I suppose. Yeah. It's kind of, there was also the theory that you attracted more girls by being the quiet one, in the same sense that a guy at a party who sits in the corner uh, will have the girl come over and say, oh, what's the matter? It's you just, know, uh, no, This was not a calculated rumor. philosophy on your part. Was it? Just a rumor, yeah. Yeah. I think Paul used to get them all with his, you know. <laughs> Let me ask you one other thing, George, because it, it's a... Uh, do you have any thoughts on, on why hard drugs and rock stars are, have become synonymous? I mean, you can see why if you had a life like Bessie Smith had or um, Billie Holiday or something like that, whatever they, what they went through, if I were them, I suppose I would take anything that was available. But I mean, yeah. most of the people in rock haven't had that dismal, grinding, horrible kind of life that... Uh, is it in any way a way of emulating those other people who, who were... Uh, well, like those. Uh, there's a lot of time, you know. I people. mean, a lot of pop people go through a hell of a lot. You know, just say in one year they go, they see so much, and they get, they go through yeah. so, so many different things that uh, they either just want to get high. I mean, basically, it starts <clears throat> with people who just want to get high. You know, like people drink. I mean, that's a big problem. People get have a drink like I suppose after the show maybe you have a drink just to get a little high so musicians you know either drink a little bit or maybe they smoke a bit and then they want to get a bit high you know and they and they're sort of really looking for something mm -hmm. and it's the same with all those Bessie Smiths and all those people because the world is such a, a hard place to try and make it in so I mean it's, it, they're all just like buffers all those drugs and things and I suppose if they get on top of you you know they get next to you what, why uh, the, the ones who've killed themselves your, your colleagues what, why heroin well, that seems to be the big one yeah. I don't uh, I'm really unqualified to talk about heroin because I've never taken it yeah. and uh, I really don't intend to there's uh you know, I'm sure it's just, uh, it's probably just the best high, you know, that's what it's down to. It's the one that gets them the highest, the quickest. But it just happens to kill you faster as well. Mm -hmm. I mean, they all sort of kill you in one way or another. And there's very few people who seem to be able to experience something like heroin and then get away from it. Mm -hmm. Because it just gets in the system and uh, they become dependent on it. I don't know. It's sad, you know, it's really sad because they're all looking for some deep love or something like that and uh, they, they miss it, you know. Yeah. It's much better to uh, try and not take any drugs, you know, if you can uh, get straight, <laughs> uh, really straight, then in a way it's much higher. I mean, I'm not really qualified to talk about that either. Yeah. I mean, I'm sort, of, well, I'm sort of in the middle, you know. Yeah. I uh, can't watch the... TV in America, to tell you the truth. It's such a load of rubbish. <laughs> <laughs> not the Dick Cabbage show, of oh, course. Oh, I, I wondered. Yeah, I... It just drives you crazy, you know, the, the commercials. You just get into something and it's sorry now, another word from... And another word from, and in the end, you know, they just put commercials on all the time. Yeah, but you have commercials too over in your side. Yeah, but it's really done good, you know. It's really done good. They show maybe, if a, if it's a 30-minute show, they'll have the commercial at the beginning, then the show will start, and after 15 minutes or so, they'll yeah. it'll end, and they say end of part one, ding, and then it goes into the commercial, and then the commercials end, and it says part two. Here it just goes ding, ding, ding from one into the next. Yeah. You don't know if it's a commercial or if it's the show. <laughs> It does similar well, thing. Are, let's say there are a lot of commercials. I'll, I'll give you that. Let me, can I get to my serious question? Yeah. You have this tremendous influence. And you all, you had, when you were together, you had this gigantic influence on the young people. Right? Uh, and everybody knows that the Beatles went through a drug phase. Did it ever occur to you, or did you ever stop and think of it this way, that the fact that this was known and the fact that you were the Beatles might have caused thousands of kids to go into drug problems that might not have otherwise? Uh, well, 
No, no. Let him ask the question. Let him ask the question. First of all, uh, when we took the notorious wonder drug LSD, yeah. it was uh, we didn't know we were having it. John and I had the had this drug, and it was given. We were at, having dinner with our dentist, yeah. and he put it in our coffee and never told us. And we'd never we never heard of it. I mean, it's a good job we hadn't heard of it because there's been so much uh, paranoia. Uh, created around the drug the people now if they take it they're already on a bad trip before they start mm. whereas for us we didn't know anything we were so naive and uh, so we had it and we went out to a club and it was incredible it was really incredible <laughs> so a couple of years later Paul had the drug too and the TV people in England came and they said so you've had this wonder drug LSD and he's saying well look it's you know the question you asked me about the responsibility for everybody else Paul said to the TV people look I'm not saying if I had the drug it's it's you if you're gonna ask me if I've had it I'm gonna say yes because I've had it I'm gonna I'm not gonna lie so he said uh, they said well have you had LSD and before they asked he said it's your responsibility because if you're gonna ask me and I'm gonna say yes and you're gonna put it on the TV saying mm -hmm. yes we've had LSD so really it was the it was their fault so they asked the question Paul said yes and then they put it on and said oh they've had LSD and then the world goes crazy yeah <laughs> I just wondered if you're you know if you have to stop and think about it. you use the word responsibility which is uh, always sounds so hokey when your school teacher says you have a tremendous responsibility you know? <clears throat> but did, did you ever say did you ever take that kind of thing seriously and think you know we got to watch ourselves because if we do this other people will do that yeah we always had to watch ourselves yeah. uh, because if we weren't watching ourselves, there was somebody else out there who was. Yeah. And there was always uh, reporters who would follow us around on tour and always try breaking into our room, catching us doing something. Yeah. You know, something maybe that we shouldn't have been doing. And uh, the whole thing is that people want other people to do nasty things because yeah. they feed off it. And then they write, ha they're doing nasty things. It's yeah. like in uh, a newspaper in England. I met David Frost the other day. Can I say David Frost or do you bleep it out? Once. Okay. <laughs> I bumped into him in the hotel and he said, here, to really bring you down is a copy of the News of the World. He just come from England. He yeah. bought this paper and there's a big story on the front saying... That's the scandal sheet. In yeah. yeah. But it's a big story saying about this group called the Marmalade, how they had orgies with their teenage fans and mm. all this sort of thing. But the whole idea of these reporters going out for months and months, scraping around, you know, lifting up the pavement, trying to see what rubbish there is to write about. And then they write about it as if they're saints and as if uh, well, everybody moral, isn't no. doing it. Yeah. yeah. So I don't know where the responsibility... I mean, maybe you just should stay at home and never say anything. Mm -hmm. That's definitely the easiest. Indian music and drugs don't mix, as I understand it. Uh, no, there's been a big... Uh, said, so. Yeah. There was a problem, you know, the indie music really got popular during that 66, 67, you know, all the psychedelic period. And uh, I think uh, from that most people have started to associate it with drugs because the hippies, apart from the classical people who used to go and watch the music anyway, like the hippie people at that time were the ones who caught on to indie music and it just happens that most of them were you know, like smoking pot or something. And since then, you know, I don't know, maybe Ravi will be able to explain how the two got caught up together, but it's really mm -hmm. a problem. It's a problem for Ravi because he's there, you know, trying to do this, spent years and years of real disciplined life in order to play this music, and then people think, oh, you know, he must, must have taken dope to play that good. You know, and it's really, it's, uh, it's, it's a terrible thing, you know, when somebody's, uh, it's completely the opposite. The audience are really misunderstanding what the whole thing's about. Maybe we can talk about that. Yeah. If we don't go now, we won't have time. We have a message from our local stations, and uh, we'll have time.